Hi, this is Marina from Dance Star Astrology with the new moon on November the 18th. And this one falls at 26 degrees of Scorpio and it's in Deccan 3. So the moon in Scorpio is traditionally in its fall. So that means that the energies at this new moon can feel quite uncomfortable and edgy. And this is in part due to the time of the year as well, when the sun is falling into the underworld before its resurrection at Christmas. And this November new f- new moon falls on fixed star Agena, which is found in the thigh of Centurus the Sensua. This is the constellation of the wounded healer Chiron. So our childhood wounds are reopened and exposed to the elements with this new moon. However, this is essential as the air helps dry out dry toxins. The autumn leaves have also dried up and fallen to the ground. So we are in the void between Samhain or Samhain or whatever, however way you want to pronounce it, and Yuletide. And it's time to sweep the last of the leaves away and burn them on the bonfire. That way we're not left with a garden full of festering mould spores. So here is the influence of the fixed star Agena. It's sarcasm and bitter speech and strong passions. The two brightest stars in Scorpio Deccan 3 are Agena and Ptolemy, and they're both in Centurus, the Centua. Um, Agena is the 10th brightest star in the sky. It gives position, friendship, refinement, morality, health and honour, according to Robson. But it's generally considered a successful star depending on the planet that it planet that it conjuncts. Sensuous in general mirrors the effects of Chiron, so it's um, Manalus says that Centurus's influence gives the ability to foresee an illness in a body not yet conscious of its sickness. This star also has the ability to prophesy. And there is another star, Unakali, which is the snake star held by Fucus. This one's also found at the beginning of this decan and exerts even more supernatural healing influences over this slithering new moon. So without the healing influence of of Agena, this decan alone is generally regarded as being one of debauchery. Agrippa says that it signifies drunkenness, fornication, wrath, violence and strife. And this is supported by my research, which I found um, there were many traumatic events and killers with the moon here. Um, The Picatrix says that this is a face of evil works and taste and joining one's attempts with women by force and with them unwilling, which is a sort of way of saying rape, basically. Um, The mysterious and sometimes eerie effect of the dark moon is bound to emphasise the occult potential of this decan. The good news is that I found an inordinate amount of talented singers in this with this placement and for the most part they're extremely seductive souls using their serpentine attributes in the most erotic manner possible. This position can be almost too cartoon-like in its potential to produce beautiful scoundrels Yet the copious amount of artistry stirred up by this bittersweet lunar cannot be ignored. Those touched by this Scorpio new moon will, quote, feel much of that what others refuse to and are open to states which most repress. As a result, they have an emotional range that many lack and are often quite sensitive, with many evidencing intuitive and psychic ability. And that's according to Austin Kopok. Um, in his book, The 36 Decans, and this is about, obviously, this decan, Scorpio 3. The energy of the new moon in Scorpio 3 does us a great service by opening our eyes to the degeneracy in the world. It's only after the stench of putrefaction is revealed that a new dawn is possible. So there's only one little aspect to this new moon this um, this time, and it's Quincunx Uranus. And this opens a door to liberate a bunch of crazed lunatics, unconventional rebels and quiet outsiders. At this new moon, there is a pathological need to shock and outrage. However, Moon Quincunx Uranus is often shy and uncomfortable with the notoriety notoriety that the outrageous behaviour brings. This new moon will see some folk being branded as attention seekers when all they're doing is being themselves. The roots of this seemingly bonkers behaviour very often stems from upbringing. 
This new moon will highlight the problems of alternative parenting. Kids growing up feeling that they are unusually special or conversely that they're not worthy of nurturing because they are so outside of the norm. Sometimes there is an odd mix of the two which leaves them feeling very insecure. So in the olden days, the idea of a Uranian upbringing would probably have meant having a rebellious single mother or growing up in a family that never really puts down roots. But hey, this is 2017 with all the controversy over what someone's gender is. I'm aware that the Uranian mother could have started out life as a man or vice versa. Anyway, the war on the traditional family and its promotion of alternatives may turn up at the new, in the news at this time. But the debaucherous side of this decan also comes into play. There will be also Mars square Pluto in the sky at the time of this new moon, which only adds to the tension. There could be some wild prophecy that comes out also. Now, predicting terrorism, well, it seems in rather bad taste these days since the probability of a violent event happening on a new or full moon is sadly quite high. So this is a good time to switch off all broadcasts and so-called news from the brave new world order and make space for your own mind. Even if it means there is a dark, empty void for a while, enjoy the silence. So that's the end of uh, what I wrote for this post online. Now, um, since then, I've been listening to a lot of a guy called, oh, I'm probably going to mispronounce his name, Ole, Ole Damagard. Yeah, that's his name. And he, he writes about, well, he basically um, writes about and does YouTube videos about false flags. And it's really difficult, this, because if people really were killed, it's obviously really in bad taste to make out it was a kind of drill or, you know, it was fake and it's fake news, but no one really knows. And that's the point. And, um, lately I've been thinking, you know what, it's, it's the amount of, uh, traumatic events that are going on now. It, it, it seems like to me, they kind of seem fake. They do. And I remember in the beginning of the year, or maybe it was late in the middle of last year, I did get pulled into the whole sort of like, oh, well, you know, it's not false flags anymore. These are real events and we've got to be really scared of uh, Islam and all that kind of stuff. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm not genuinely sure about them now. And I know that sounds kind of a bit of a turnaround, but I've been wondering about this for a lot, for a while, because it does seem, it they do seem to be, you see, I was thinking if they can really lie and go over the top about things that I know really aren't true, um, you know, for on our side of things, then they can easily do it for the other side. Um, and so it really depends on which side of the fence that you lie. And you you know that that the the press, for example, you've got two sides. You're going to have you're going to have the the left side who are saying you know not all muslims and all that and will downplay every single thing that happens on that side of things um but the real i mean the real problem i guess with third world immigration and islamic immigration is more to do with the sort of cultural clash i don't think it's to do with terrorism i think it's more to do with you know how safe you feel at night and if you're with with the well the attitudes that they have towards women and what they wear and if you're covered up or if you're not covered up that's that's more worrying to me and um and probably you know relationships between western women and very westernized women and um islamic or kind of eastern type mentality men and with that i do include by the way uh places like southern europe because I mean, in case you don't already know, my family come from Sicily and, uh, and and I've been a lot around Greece as well. They were absolute gentlemen. Now, Sicily, different matter. <laughs> Sicily, no. Uh, Sicily is their attitude towards women. There are good ones because I did marry one and had a child by one. Um, but they're the influence of sort of southern mentality is quite strong there 
uh, and you know, I'd you'd 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 be grabbed basically in discos and things like that. Um, so it it's not there's a sort of you can sort of tell the di- the difference between the attitude of men as you go further east and further south in Europe um, as a woman. Uh, so that's my take on it. Um, so the the danger is, or, or the danger, that the, the worry is that the mentality of these men when you have a young daughter, you know, it, that's, that's when it gets worrisome. But as far as the, the sort of the terrorism uh, aspect, I don't know about it. I, d- I don't know how much of it's true. Maybe only half is, maybe none of it is. I don't know. Um, but, th- but the fear, the fear-based mind control, that, I mean, that's really what it is. And it's demonizing as well. And then it occurred to me, I was thinking, you know what, this, this, the media and the news now are the new church. They are. And obviously the protagonists are the two religions anyway. Maybe bringing in um, many Muslims is just, you know, we're just bringing up, bringing in a new um, form of, or an upgrade of the Abrahamic mindset, you know, into into Europe as a way of mind control, as they did uh, back in in the Roman Empire days, in Constantine days. So it's, it's just happening again. It's just a repeat of that. Now it's like, if you dare blaspheme by calling it out, then you are a witch. So yeah, while the West has become more and more secular, really, it's just being replaced by the media now. And, um, you know, people high up in the media, they're the new priests, they really are. And if you are seen as being a heretic, then, you know, you must be burnt. And they are, they are book burning now. They are basically uh, censoring people on YouTube and everywhere else. So it's, it's, you know, it's the same thing over again, but in, in cyber, cyber world, or rather in the 21st century, it's just the new version of it. But the funny thing now is that Christianity is being demonized a lot, I've noticed. So it's kind of the tables have turned, isn't it? With all these kind of Abrahamics, um, whether it's Islam, whether it's uh, Judaism, whether it's Christians, it's the, the problem is the dogma and the problem is the divide and conquer thing. Um, but what I've, I was kind of veering towards almost becoming a Christian again. Ah, um, but then I realised, it's only because I love the iconography. And then I heard about esoteric Christianity uh, and I think, well, actually, no, that's, that's, that's more, that's more my thing. And I always thought, you know, what is it? Why can't we have all the beautiful artwork and the symbolism and, you know, the true meaning of it, which, you know, goes back to Egyptian times, you know, Mary is Isis and so on. Um, Jesus is the sun God and Krishna, you know, they all, they, I've written about this so many times about how they all, um, they all correspond and there's truth in, in all world religions. Um, but especially in the, the seasonal, um, rites of paganism, which really, um, Catholicism just blended in with. And if you take out all the freaking dogma and crap that they hijacked paganism with, it's really basically the same. It really is. And so, um, you know, thank God for astrology, really, because it sort of kept everything, all the archetypes, all the the seasonal natural law um, knowledge and wisdom together. And they may have tried to burn all the books in Alexandria, uh, and there may be a whole library of them in the in the Vatican as well, of all the the hidden knowledge, but it's it's all there and it's all in our DNA, I think, and I think it's we just have to remember it. That's all. Um, one book I can really recommend at the moment that's blowing my mind, but I keep falling asleep while I'm reading it because I'm so knackered at the end of the day, um, is Manly P. Hall, um, which is the Secret Teachings of All Ages just he's just amazing he's just amazing and you know people some people say well he was a mason all the masons are evil and you know blah, blah, blah. 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he, if, I don't think, not all Masons, <laughs> hashtag, um, if he was bringing that wisdom to the, to the earth, uh, to the world and to, to, and it's all over YouTube, it's accessible, it's not hidden. So therefore, it, whatever he's doing is, is right. And another thing to end on, since we are in the the void between the seasons uh, to ponder on, is I think enjoying the silence and trying to connect with our ancestors because they, and this is also connected with, since we are tomorrow, in fact, is November the 11th, which is Poppy Day, um, Rem- Remembrance um, Day for peoples of the commonwealth i don't know if you celebrate it in uh celebrate it's not really celebration um but it's yeah thinking of of those who died in world war one which was a ridiculous war for for no good reason and so many people died um yeah blood sacrifice again anyway um that's tomorrow and i thought yeah it's an appropriate time of the year to to connect with those who've passed in other dimensions, our ancestors, see what we can remember and honour them, honour them, and also to, to try and remember our divinity, which has been really smothered uh, and uh, firewalled by all the technology and the crap that we, that's thrown at us every day, you know, information overload and fear-based mind control and news, news, news. And yes, I do admit I have been pulled into it too. I think everyone had, um, you know, if you look back at some of the, some of the mundane astrology, it's, it's hard because I want to, I think it is interesting to see how politics is played out. And it is interesting to see which come what what's happening within the countries how they are going from you know left to right or you know where they're going on that barometer um i actually do want to do i still have to do it a video on the political compass and astrology because i definitely think this is my theory before i'll leave you with is that on the political compass by the way you get it's not just left and right that's sort of left to right. And then up and down is authoritarianism at the top and freedom at the bottom. So this is how I see it astrologically, is that um, authoritarianism at the top would be Saturn going down to Jupiter as freedom. And then left to right, left would be Neptune and right would be Uranus. So here's a little um, plea, really. If you want to see more videos about these kind of things and these topics that I'm sort of getting into a little bit more now, Um, especially the one about the political compass, because I've been meaning to do that for a long time, but I just have not got the time. I do have to do readings to pay the bills. I have cut down on uh, spending so much time on the horoscopes. Those have been slimmed right down now, Uh, but I still have to do readings and they take up a day. So I'd rather be doing a video in, in the day if I could. So yes, Please, if you think the political compass video would be a good thing, an interesting thing to look into, then become a patron and that will encourage me to do it finally. And also, I haven't forgot about Paul McCartney. (laughs) I want to do one about him as well. In case you don't know, he might not be alive. So um, we'll look into that. All right then. All the best. Bye bye.